Hello YouTube, Kimosabi here, coming at you with another video. This is off a web page, Time Colonist, and this is uh, saying, Kayakers are disturbing orcas, new study finds, read up by Linda V. Maples, off the Seattle Times, published January 4th, 2018, 4.50 a.m. Kayakers in Haddo Strait have been up as close encounters with the Sutter as an orca. Here's a little picture. Uh, Seattle kayakers are approaching on orca whales, new, new research shows, and they are not being ticketed like other boaters. Uh, pub a paper published recently in the scientific journal PLOS One finds kayakers are a fast-growing segment of the 50 million U.S. whale-watching uh, industry, which brings at least half a million people out every year, 500,000, to the transboundary waters of the Salish Sea. According to estimates by a whale museum in Friday Harbor. But while well, incidents of getting too close to the charismatic orca whales are down among commercial whale watch vessels, some types of violations by kayakers with or without guides are growing, and those are met with the least amount of action by law enforcement. According to analysts in the paper of data compiled by the Soundwatch Boater Education Program run by the Whale Museum since 1993, basically almost 25 years. The goal of the volunteer-run program is to reduce vessel disturbance to southern resident killer whales and other marine wildlife with public education, both federal and state laws that require boaters to keep their distance at at least 200 yards away. What we have seen is kayak incidents are increasing because they are of a lower priority from an, from an enforcement standpoint because there are so many other things going on in the water that need to be addressed said Elizabeth Seely, lead author on the paper. Some kayakers are not abiding by the laws, paddling out to the killer whales to get closer to them. It is really upsetting to see, and they don't have any consequences for it. It's not a small factor. Big multi-passenger motorized boats are just part of the whale watching action in the Sailor's Sea, and business is booming between 2012 and 2015. The number of kayakers booked with commercial U.S. whale watching companies increased by 30% according to the paper. The Whale Museum has worked with NOAA Fisheries and the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife for years to distribute information about the regulations, yet the encroachments continue, Seeley said. It is something you learn as a kid. Unless you get in trouble for it, you're going to keep doing it, she said. But with so many other vessels also on the water, the limited law enforcement has targeted motorized boats. Yet interrupting the feeding and socialization of the endangered orcas matters, whether by motorized or non-motorized boat, said Sean Larson, another author on the paper and also a con consultant to the museum. Whatever the activity the whales are in the middle of, they are likely startled out of it when suddenly surfacing amid a bunch of humans on the water. These whales are acclimated to people, but not people right on top of them, Larson said. The whales in the JK and L pods are called Southern residents and are critically endangered distinct population down to only 76 members. Reducing stress on the whales is important for, to, uh, for their survival, multiple research findings have documented. According to data compiled with the center, the J-Pod whales, which historically spend more time in their core summer habitat than either K or l -pod whales, spent only 22 days in their core summer habitat, including the west side of San Juan Island, from June to September of 2017. That compared with 66 days in the same period in 2016. Appearances by whales from all three pods totaled only 36 days in the Southern Residence Corps habitat in 2017, compared with 75 in 2016. Balcombe said, meanwhile, transient orcas, which eat marine uh, mammals, are booming in population and often seen. The threats identified as suppressing the Southern Residence, including toxics and uh, toxins and vessel traffic, don't seem to affect the transient, and Balcombe isolates food as the main issue for the southern residents which eat only fish, overwhelmingly salmon and preferably chinook. The center has just documented in its population survey more than 250 transient whales utilizing the same waters as the southern residents. Uh, the increase in transient population tracks with the growth in the seal population because of the federal protection against hunting. We started this study in 1975 and there were probably half a dozen encounters with transient orcas, Balcombe said. They are here now because the seals are here and they have revolt. They're cranking out babies every two years. 
it's a food rich environment they keep eating these marshmallows the seals and are doing just great so there you have it um so it sounds like the you know the special uh orcas in these uh pods um only eat salmon preferably chinook obviously they'll like the chinook um and then there's these transient killer whales within the same waters that eat seals and other mammals like that um which would probably be kind of stressful if there's only like 70 something of you and 200 and something of them which is more than double so yeah interesting see what you think um consider commenting sharing subscribing have a good one kimasabi out we'll see you in the next one